Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the online broadcast network for movie talk, and the schmoes know, this is Meet the Movie Press. Roundtable movie news and commentary from the industry's premier film journalists. Happy Friday, everyone. This is Meet the Movie Press on the Popcorn Talk Network. How the hell is everyone out there? We are taping. We are not live just yet. We will be back live next week. So you are getting this a little bit later, but um, we're still here for you. We're still kicking ass. And uh, like I said, this is Meet the Movie Press. I'm editor-in-chief of schmoznote.com, Mark Riley. And my guest co-host today is a fan favorite, Eo Miyimbe from Heroic Hollywood. How are you, brother? What's good? Good morning. What's morning. This good is morning, Schmoville. Schmoville, good morning, Popcorn Fanboy Talk. Nation, Popcorn Talk. Everyone, everyone out there. Um, thanks for coming in and filling in for no uh, for Mr. Snyder, who is on assignment. You guys, you can follow him at the end Snyder and just say, hey, he'll be back next week. Uh, but we're going to talk about some of the news that he dropped this week, some yeah. of the news that uh, El Miyimbe is going to drop here on the show. So you guys, when this when you hear about this, you're gonna visit heroichollywood.com, schmoesno.com, get your get get the breakdown on this. But we're gonna discuss it here, as well as uh, a ton of news that broke this week, guys. Because busy well, news week for sure. Yeah, day, I was kind of busy. So um, first off, I want to ask, how the hell are you, man? Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, yeah. How's yeah. how is heroic Hollywood treating you? I mean, that thing it, blew up. Yeah, beyond my wildest expectations. I yeah, didn't man. think I'd be doing the numbers that I'm doing now. My ad company's happy. Um, I bet. The, it, it's just it's the readers. Uh, I had, you know, minor website issues like with like with ads on the mobile stuff that I'm dealing with and back end sure. stuff. You know, it's a pain in the ass, but uh, can't complain. And then you know, I, I you know people think I have a publicist. I don't. I didn't. Nice. Nice. I, didn't, I didn't pitch anybody, you know, all, every, all the publicity we got since we launched has been, you know, these outlets and individuals reaching out to us and stuff, and uh, it's it's been overwhelming. Man. My, my, what, what's cool about it, though, is that, you know, my, my parents are getting a kick out of it. They never understood, like, this nice. was, like, the, 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 the fanboy news thing that I do was a side hustle. And sure. Like, what is that, you know? Wait, I saw your mom tweeting out. Yeah, right? my she mom. She was tweeting out. Oh, she was on your, Facebook, actually. She was on Facebook, I right. pray she don't. She wants to get on Twitter to, like, <laughs> monitor me. It's like, don't do that. Yeah, me, don't please. go on Twitter. Don't so go on she, Twitter. She goes on Facebook and posts all my press links and stuff. And yeah, because yeah. it's been kicking ass. I mean, that, yeah. that, there was a great Grantland article. Yeah, wow. Which you guys, um, where can they find? Well, Grantland.com. Just do it. Do, do a search, uh, Heroic mm. Hollywood, El Miyimbe. Grantland Scooper Hero. Uh, Scooper Hero. There you go. Great, Three yeah. words. Great. It was a great yeah. title. Um, and uh, it, was, it was what I loved about it is like they were with you, it seemed like, at, at Comic Con. Yeah, Thursday night, uh, mm -hmm. reporter Alex Papadimus came down. He wanted to see what the, you know, basically a lot of people in media have a perception about Comic Con. Right. Right, uh, knowing of the other the entourage side of Comic Con, so I, he came with me and we got him into the Wired Cafe. He hung out for a little while. He then I took him to the Green Inferno party. Ooh, nice! Uh, Green Inferno, the IGN party, Fandango. Uh, then back to the Fox party. There were like nice. five. It was it was like an entourage thing. We went, we were party party hopping, and then that's when I got the tip in on. Uh, on Star Wars Episode Nine, and yeah. uh, he was there watching, so his story just became something else. Yeah, you know? that's that. That's he what tagged I... along, and he saw my process and stuff, and I would show him and stuff. He he's also a fellow journalist, and I told him, you know, we have to protect the source and stuff. So yeah. he saw how it goes down, how yeah. I, how I get scoops, and how I trade favors and stuff. Part reporter, part concierge, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully we confirm by D23, you know? Well, I think, hopefully. yeah, the, my, my feelings on this, I said it on a, a very, very intimate solo Meet the Movie Press when I was just by myself right. uh, during Comic-Con because I couldn't go down there because of work. But I'm like, oh, he got, uh, Elmi Embe scooped uh, Comic-Con panel. It, it was my opinion that they were maybe going to announce mm -hmm. Colin Trevorrow. And if you guys aren't familiar, Kel, um, we a uh, very close source of yours is saying that Colin Trevorrow is going to be the director of Episode Nine. I completely buy that. 
I think it's it's kind of an almost no brainer where you're like, oh yeah, because Brad Bird recommended him for episode seven. Right. Then he goes off and does Jurassic World, and as you know, guys, Jurassic World is the third biggest movie of all time now. So uh, when it, it, this is what they want, the, these studios want a director like Trevorrow who can come in, collaborate well. I would say, absolutely, collaborate well, not leave due to cre uh, creative differences, but collaborate with the higher ups and also instill their voice on there and make a shitload of money at the box office. I mean, this is like he's a good soldier. Yeah, he is a go he is a good soldier. He's a good soldier. I do. Did you like Jurassic World? Yeah, I had a great time. I, I liked it and loved it, but it, it was it was I saw it for what it is. It was a fun ride. I that, had a blast. I, I I thought it was it was the best time I had in the theater this year. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. And it, it's you know yeah, it, it, there are a lot of plot holes uh, for a clone dinosaurs eating people movie. Yeah, that's that's where I have a little bit of trouble where everybody's kind of getting down on the clone dinosaurs movie. But anyways, so guys, Grantland uh, dot com go. Uh, Superhero, superhero, yeah, and it is a great article, and I do, I did love the fact that it was this entourage, you know, they they comment on your the duds you're wearing, you know, how, no, how you look good, yeah. and the alpha geek lifestyle, well, yeah, well, you know, not all nerds, you know, like well groomed, well well mannered, well dressed, and absolutely, very geeky, uh, you, you know, know? And, and that's that's the thing, we are the the cool kids now, yes. maybe back in in junior high, high school. Um, we're about the same age, I think. Yeah, I'm 42, yeah. For, yeah, I'm, I'm 40. So, okay. uh, you know, back in those days, yeah, there may have been some, you know, turning turning the, the other cheek because they're dorks who like Star Wars or they like superheroes because back in our day, we didn't really have the superhero movies going. We had Batman. We had Batman. Batman. We had Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Superman, I would Superman, say. Well, yeah. so what, by, by part three, we were doing bad with Superman. But, yeah. um... Uh, it's a great time to be a kid in the 80s, man. I'll never take it back. Absolutely. I mean, that was the thing. I grew up on Indiana Jones, Star Wars, E.T., Superman, yeah. um, Goonies, all these movies. So, like, to come around and, and we're working in this space and it's as popular as ever. Absolutely. It's really fun. And I, that's what I love about this article is that, I mean, it started really with Any Cool News and Harry, uh, Harry Knowles, yes. right? You look at him and you're like, oh yeah, that's the, those are the geeks. And, he had a writer. And no, yeah. No offense to Harry for what, you know who he is. He made he made this space. He is he one of the pioneers. The whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and now though, I mean, the, it is. You look at us and and you know, I, I tend to think I, I dress fairly well. Yes, you do. Um, uh, but I didn't wear my suit, uh, Star Wars shirt because we you dress well and have an attractive girlfriend. You're not a geek. Hey, thank you. <laughs> All right. Hey, babe, did you hear that? You got a call. You got a you got a scoop right there. Um, All right. So let's get to talking some news because we know Heroic Hollywood is doing well. I know that you have some stuff you want to talk about. So do you want to? What do you want to do, man? Do you want to? You want to launch something or you want to talk some news out there? Because there's plenty of news to talk about, guys. Uh, let's see. You know what they? You know how they uh, on TV shows they make you wait till the end or towards the middle so you can make sure you right. tune in. So we hold suspense oh, unless you want to drop them. Uh, there are three of them. Unless you want to drop one and another one later, then another one towards the end. I think I know what I want to do. I think I want to. Well, we're going to keep with some themes here. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk some news uh, from uh, you know the different IPs out there, yeah. i.e., Star Wars, DC, Marvel, which is pretty much some of the major news here. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll talk about some news there, and then we'll work in the scoop sure. uh, at the tail end of, the, uh, of that discussion. Okay. But I do want to start with, uh, let's just start with Fox, because I, this is an interesting thing. I want to give some props over to my co-host for breaking this exclusive. They are saying Channing Tatum is uh, no longer going to be Gambit and part of the Gambit movie, which I find incredibly Sad if it comes to be. It's not official, guys. Not official. This is, but this is what uh, Jeff Snyder is claiming that there is trouble with the Gambit movie. That Channing Tatum, his passion project, mm -hmm. essentially is he's no longer with Gambit. Now it's interesting to me. He was at the Fox presentation at Comic Con. Right. He sat there, took pictures. He took a picture. He helped Stan Lee off stage. Um, and now we're hearing that he's not going to be a part of it. What, give me your thoughts on this, man. Uh, I agree with what Devin tweeted. I think he's negotiating in the press. Okay. 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 And another thing is a hundred fifty million dollar budget for a movie where he's lately not putting bros in the seats in movie theaters. Like, like mm. if you see Magic Mike, ninety six percent female. Yeah. Straight and gay bros avoided him like the plague. But he's really? always had a problem 
attracting young males, straight young males uh, to the theaters and stuff. So it's like, for some reason, he's not connecting with bros. So it's like 150 million for a movie. That means it'd have to top out domestically just at 300. And for Fox, that's a risky, but they did Deadpool for half that budget. Right. You know? Right. So it's a little risky for, I understand the studio's position, but you know, so I hope they could find common ground and stuff, but uh, if they don't do it with him, I think the project's dead because it is his dream project, or he's attached to it somehow, but yeah, yeah. he's also not looking too good. I mean, he put on a weight a lot. You know, he took off all his- All his, his muscle. Ma- his magic mic weight is no longer magic, and now he's just, he's a little bloated, but I think he's negotiating in the press. That's, yeah. That's what it feels like to me. That's, I, I would agree with that, <clears throat> and that's that's what a lot of people talked about um, kind of on the, uh, the blogs out there, what we wrote about. Um, and it's it's interesting to me. I mean, do you think take Channing Tatum out of it? Do you think Gambit is a name out there? Like, it's not Wolverine. No, I know. It's but, not Superman. It's not Batman. It's not Spider Man. But we live now in the era where second, third tier characters are becoming all stars. Like nobody thought an Iron Man movie would work. Seven, exactly. You know, all those years ago, um, Ant Man most recently. You right. Know, only Marvel could do that. So they have this brand and. Fox, uh, but Fox is more into their headliners and stuff. But it's an, I hear the script is great. I, I've heard that too. I heard the script is great and stuff. I'm trying to back it down for myself, but yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's just it's a little risky at that budget range, you know, because he he also had nobody saw White House down, right? You know, they saw right. yeah, they, nobody saw White House down, and they, they, considering that as well, like when he does straight on action. He just doesn't pull them into the seats and stuff. So they have a concern, legitimately. Yeah. You know? What about 22 Jump Street, 23 Jump Street, or just the, the franchise? Is that more of Jonah Hill pulling in some people? It's the, a the combination. combination. It's a combination. Yeah. I, I, would, I would say so. I think it's the fact that 21 Jump Street did so well. Mm-hmm. Um, you had Lord and Miller, Jonah Hill. Yeah. It, it's now a brand. So, oh. yeah. I see what you're saying. It's, I mean, geez, I had no idea that this movie is that big of a budget. 150 million. Yeah, I think that is very. I, now that you said that, I'm like, wow, that is kind of um, that's and, risky. And Deadpool costs half. Yeah, and I was on movie fights with Screen Junkies where they mm-hmm. where, where I was arguing for Deadpool, where I'm like, oh, I think they kind of won Comic Con. Um, with their presentation because everybody was talking about Deadpool after that trailer. I thought DC won the whole thing. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna break it here on my own show, Meet the Movie Press. I wanted to argue DC won. Somebody else grabbed it before it came to me, and I was like, Ah, shit! I got it. Well, Deadpool. I agree with that mm-hmm. because DC. I mean, we'll talk about DC in a minute, but um, yeah, that that trailer. You know what? Let's talk about DC right now because sure. that trailer. I'm still in love with that trailer. Me too. Everybody's eating it up. I mean, there is so much speculation out there i mean they're going nuts with now saying that freaking the joker was jason todd oh to kiss my, my ass that's God. not happening guys I, I love the internet though i mean have fun that's a big sandbox out there but get, get your head out of the ass okay <laughs> that's not <laughs> no they're not going to rewrite mytho- like 40 years of mythology here um the joker is his own thing jason todd is his own thing robin is blah 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 right so um Let's let's talk about some uh, DC news now because sure. we're going through it. And uh, Chris Pine mm-hmm. has been confirmed as Steve Trevor in Wonder Woman. Um, what do you think about the fact that he's playing the love interest in this? It's interesting. I think a safe choice for him. I have yep. a feeling that him headlining Star Trek probably. You know, he got like all these actors want the superhero payday, but they don't want the superhero responsibility. So right. I might, he was offered Trevor and he was offered Green Lantern. Yeah. So he, he took Trevor. Okay, so the rumors were true. Yeah. And a lot of talk that he might be Hal Jordan or he, he uh, might Green be Lantern. Hal Jordan. He okay. was being considered for the Green Lantern Corps movie and stuff. Okay. But I think, I don't, coming off Star Trek, I don't think he wanted to headline another franchise. He wanted to be a part of one, but not have yeah. all that responsibility shouldered on him. You yeah. Know? I mean, did you? And I talked to, to, I can't remember who I was talking to about it. it might, I think it was Jeff last week. The Star Wars, uh, Star Wars, the Star Trek movies, they're not performing as well as they maybe could have or right. should. I don't know if it's because there are less Star Trek fans, which I don't buy. I'm a huge Star Trek fan now because mm-hmm. of the rebooted series, J.J. Abrams' first movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't I don't necessarily buy that, but we did get into a conversation of Chris Pine not being able to launch another big movie 
besides Star Trek because Star Trek is ensemble. It's right. a name, you know, you're gonna get butts in the seats, mm -hmm. not necessarily because of him. So is that why he took Steve Trevor? I actually like what you're saying, that he doesn't want to really headline another kind of big franchise. But he wants to be a part of it. But he wants to be a part yeah, of it. So. Yeah, because Steve Trevor can be uh, in every single Wonder Woman movie coming out. Pretty I mean, much, yeah. He's Pretty he's much. the love interest of Diana. He's, like some some people on Twitter, like he's gonna be like the Ken doll. Of, this is I disagree. It's not gonna. He's he's not some male bimbo or something. He's mm -hmm. a, it's a very relevant character. I think the liaison also to the Justice League or to Cat. Wait, wait. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To the to the government and stuff. So absolutely, he that, still gets FaceTime with the heroes, right? Of, again, without burdening having the burden on his shoulders of headlining one. You know? Right. I, I I think yeah and. You know, a lot of people bring up the conversation on that, you know, there are no strong female uh, characters out there that can headline a franchise. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman's going to be, quote unquote, the first. I, I think, you know, we have Katniss with the Hunger Games. Come on, it's not necessarily the first or first superhero movie. I mean, they always say superhero movie. I could argue Hunger Games is a superhero movie with Katniss. I Absolutely. mean, it's that kind of in my opinion, genre. So, uh, but I, I like the idea of a strong male character supporting yeah. a strong female character, Something which is this. And everybody's making a point in these blogs saying, no, 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 Chris Pine is going to be very manly and he's going to be, he's going to have a lot to do. He's not just the love interest. I'm like, okay, yeah, we so get like it. like reverse sexism going on. It, it, yeah. yeah. I'm like, just, you know what? Shut the hell up and just enjoy the movie and be thankful that Chris Pine is going to be in the DC universe. I think it's great. So That's I'm glad he was confirmed. What do you, yeah, so no Hal Jordan because of maybe he didn't want a, a superhero movie. Any any word on who might be up for Hal Jordan? Are you hearing anything? I The trail's kind of gone cold with me. Yeah. I'm, that, I'm, that's one of my things I'm trying to like get better at is, you know, expand sourcing in all the departments of all these movies. So DC's still a tough enough for me to crack. I yeah. Can, I count my blessings and get what I can. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's back to the drawing board and they're, they're still meeting with people and stuff. So I'll, we should start hearing names shortly. Yeah, I would think so because, you know, we got to, Justice League is going to start filming uh after well soon yeah soon right sometime um, this year i think right sometime yeah or is it well, no, no, wonder woman shoots this fall and i think the spring of next year is justice League. there you go because affleck's got to direct his director another movie that's right before that's right he goes puts the cape back on yeah yeah that's gonna be great so what do you think of those uh empire pictures oh of? i i love them yeah Some of the readers and stuff it, the gangbusters for us like a scoop you know yeah so yeah i like i like uh i like the alternate cover i think not only are we getting the most cinema comic book cinematic accurate Batman. Yeah. We're also getting the most comic books accurate cinematic Bruce Wayne. Like yeah. I, I was feeling he's got good bone structure. He looks like Bruce Wayne. He's the height. He had the three piece suit swag going on. Yeah. Slim fit. So it's like he looked he he looked fresh. He was yeah. well dressed and we never really got in my opinion I mean I I like Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne, but I think I think uh as Ben Affleck said, his effed up version, we get to see yeah. closer to what Miller did in 86 with it. You know? I can't wait for that. And I, and we talked about it on Movie Fights as well on Screen Junkies, um, kind of doing an alternate pitch for a Batman movie. Mm -hmm. World's Greatest Detective. Yeah. I want to see that. I and I, I feel like we and might get... he's also get... the world's greatest brother. I mean, he's got... Yeah. You see, did you see the suit up close in Comic Con? He's got brass knuckles in his, in his suit and stuff. So he's a brawler. And yeah. That's what I've been hearing. The fights are like... You, like in the previous Batman, we just couldn't really see what he was doing. In this yeah. one, you, you get a hint in a trailer shot. He could he could throw and he could he could he's got knuckle game. But yeah. uh, looking forward to his take on Bruce, um, his take as Bruce Wayne as well. Yeah, you know? I I can't wait. And I mean, one of my favorite, the, probably the best moment of that trailer for me was Bruce Wayne running into the yeah. falling building. And he's like looking all up. Yeah, and he's stuff. looking up. You know, like who the hell is that guy? I'm gonna take him out. I love that. I mean, that's a, if if that's not a hero, I don't know what it is. You know, they, they say the heroes are are the ones running into the danger rather than away, and it's perfectly shown there. So can't it goes without saying. Um, Batman v Superman is going to be amazing. That that trailer just killed me, floored me. I loved it so much. Um, what what are you hearing out there in DC? Do you want to uh, you want to drop it? Let's do the first DC rumor. We're gonna do uh, the first DC rumor, guys. Everybody, first, so you we know. have a Marvel thing, a DC thing, and a Star Wars thing. So let's drop the DC one. So 
uh, originally, I thought, I mean, I would want to put out that people constantly ask me on, ask on my email and Twitter, who's Scoot McNary playing? Who's Scoot McNary? So this week, yeah. we did Callan Mul- Cal Mulvey did, is uh, doing the KGBs. I mean, I've been getting asked about that one as well. So it's like, and yeah, yeah. it's been rumored, like when Devin broke it originally in December of uh, last year, and but nobody put him together. And then I was like, okay, who is this guy's playing? So yeah, Callan Mul- Cal Mulvey's playing KGBs. But also... Uh, Scoot McNary's playing Jimmy Olsen, per the rumors. You know, right? So he, he lost his legs in, in the Battle of Metropolis or the Black Zero incident. That's and why the green socks. The green socks were the green screen. The green removal. screen, Just yeah. like Gary Sinise and uh, Forrest Gump, they remove his knees digitally and stuff, and he's, uh, he's a cripple. Holy crap. Yeah, Jimmy Olsen. That makes sense. Jimmy Olsen. Nice. That's okay. The so that's the first DC rumor. Because uh, once they saw those green, uh, yeah. green legs, they're like Flash. And he's in the trailer. Gonna... He's in the trailer. You can see in the courtroom scene when uh, Superman comes in. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he's Jimmy Olsen, per the rumors. Guys, okay. per the rumors. Um, but, you know, you have, a pre- you have a pretty good track record, dude. So, um, Thank you. you know, I, I, I tend to believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because you, you back it up, and that, that makes a lot of sense, too. And, guys, what I love about the movie Press and with these scoops that we do, if, if you think about it, you know, it, it's got to make sense, too. When you get, like, some random kind of scoop or you know i could use just the version of that fake as hell uh spider-man cast list that was going around everybody was that you know uh, guys i saw it you're you're tweeting me um i you got to think like scoop mcnary makes sense as As jimmy Jimmy olsen right so here's a a rumor something that you're you're putting out there would jason biggs being a villain in the new spider-man movie make sense to you no because he's they're going young and this kid he's back in high school jason biggs looked like he could be the the principal of that high school yeah <laughs> and, come and, on, man. and also and no offense to jason biggs who is a great actor he is not the kind of name they're gonna go after no that's sony yeah and, and billy zane no i i mean i love these actors but you gotta think that Look at what, and somebody did a great tweet yesterday. It was like, you, you look at Michael Douglas and Robert uh, Redford mm-hmm. in Marvel movies. That's the kind of caliber and name Thank recognition. You. So when you put two and two together, that, that does not equal four. That, it actually equals what the hell. Where did that originate? On Reddit, right? I think Reddit, yeah. Okay. Fanboy Nation. Yep. Pay close attention. Don't believe everything you read on Reddit sub forums. I could go post right now that he's going to write uh, a Phase Four Marvel movie in the post. Yeah. Don't believe everything you read on IMDb forums. Don't believe anything you read on forums in general. Don't believe, especially Reddit forums. I one of the annoyances of the scooper trade is kind. Of, you know, I spend more time sh- not you know shooting stuff down mm-hmm. than than going on and get the actual information. So like that, you know, that Jason Todd. Uh, Joker room. Come yeah. on, man. Come on. You I, know, so it's a lot of that stuff going on, but yeah, it's uh, it's annoying. It can be annoying, but it's part of the. It's it comes with the territory. So I right. get it, but I don't believe anything I read on Reddit forums or any forums in general. I do my own investigative work because anybody could put that stuff up there. Yeah, you can't vet it. Yeah, it's it's very true, and it's just like, and I'm sure you get them too. I get emails that are like, hey, I I know for a fact that you know so and so is in star wars or i know for a fact and you're like who are you i don't know i'm not going to listen to this plus it doesn't make sense Mm -hmm. when you're sending me something that you know again it's gotta it's just gotta make sense and it not only for story which is Mm -hmm. interesting like this Mm -hmm. like i love the jimmy olsen like he lost his legs Mm -hmm. like that doesn't sound random to me that sounds legitimate yeah you're changing the mythology a bit like jimmy olsen you know in the comics is walking around but look at what they're doing now. Superman is held accountable for the actions in Man of Steel. Buildings are falling all over the place. Jimmy Olsen is there. That's that's pretty freaking rad, okay. in my opinion. So let me. I want, I'm turning to Twitter real quick and uh, let's say Joe at Joe R. No, Joe Messen. Sorry, mm-hmm. I was reading that wrong. Joe Messen asked, "Does Will Smith have a Deadshot solo movie in development?" It's odd for him to do an ensemble movie. What's the catch? I have my thoughts on that. What do you I think? I think part of his deal probably has, he's I mean, he, he's got uh, clauses for other movies, like you know, like the way Marvel does uh, when you sign on to do their movies. But I, I, I don't know. That's that's a good question, actually. 
Maybe, maybe not. Maybe we see him in the standalone Batman movie. But I think he's not. I don't think this is a one-time deal for him just to be in Suicide Squad. I think there are others. Yeah, other multiple films in the equation as well. Whether it's a Deadshot standalone movie, I have no idea. I don't know. Yeah, and it this, might be reaching a bit. Might. Yeah, know. and uh, and that's that's a great one, Joe Messon. Uh, good, at good Joe question. Messon, thank you for that. Um, what's going on with my Twitter? I can't. What I can't favor this. Everybody's saying, well, what's going on Twitter? Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, something's going on with my Twitter. Oh, guys, everybody, hold on. My Twitter's weird. Um, yeah, that's it. Joe Messon. At Joe Messon, thank you for that, man. That's like a, that's kind of like a hopeful news break that we do. Like, yeah. what, my thoughts behind it are that this is what I personally take from it. Will Smith hasn't had a really big hit in a while. No, he hasn't. So this might be a version of him going, you know what? I'm going to be a part of an ensemble thing that, that has a chance to right. destroy the box office. Mm-hmm interesting it's the villains in the dc universe you know he's not the main dude really i mean 50 million trailer views too jeez i know what would you think of the suicide squad trailer oh i loved it man. me too i loved it you see the thing is i broke amanda waller so yeah, see, yeah. Real, see her for the first time talk we throw him in the hole then throw away the hole like, yeah oh my god that was that was epic in, to see that in hall h I, yeah i bet I bet, and I love, I love the the ties to the DC universe. Mm-hmm. Ever since Superman came out, it's like these guys come out of the woodwork. I'm just like, yeah, man, that makes sense. Absolutely. So I love that we got freaking fly in here. Sorry, listeners at home, you can't see the fly uh, that's that's buzzing around our head. And if you are listening at home, you are obviously on uh, iTunes, hopefully, and subscribing and rating Popcorn Talk Network. Sharing Meet the Movie Press with your friends and on uh, YouTube at uh, youtube.com forward slash popcorn talk network. Uh, Meet the Movie Press. That's my plug. So let's go on with some news. We got some DC. I love that scoop, man. Um, Let's go on to let's stick with DC for a minute, actually, because this is big. Jenna Malone as Barbara Gordon. Yeah, yesterday. That broke Oracle. Yesterday. That broke yesterday from your old crew. Yeah. Right? Kelvin, Latina Review. Kelvin broke that. Nice. So, uh, what? I buy it. I buy it too, yeah. Uh, I, it. I totally buy it. You know, there was a while ago she was on set and then uh, the red hair kind of got everybody yeah, going, was... oh, she's the Robin from Dark Knight Returns. Um, mm-hmm. What's her? Carrie? Carrie Kelly. Carrie Kelly. Um, which I bought too. I, I, I'm like, obviously, now we've seen the the shot of the robin suit with the joker graffiti on it in the trailer mm-hmm. um so it looks like they're kind of following along with the with the mythology set up in the comics that robin was killed by the joker as it was in the dark knight returns right. and then he picks up a, a a new sidekick in carrie kelly yeah that'd be fun but it makes more sense for barbara gordon and or oracle oracle makes i sense. love that there's something else that might break later today from, oh yeah, uh, from LR as well. He was telling me, so it's like, ooh, it's something to do with the trailer too. So really, we all we, we all thought about something in the trailer. Came from a certain character, no, it came from a different character. So he's gonna probably break that later today. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh nice. Yeah. All right. Come here, fly. Get the. I know there's out a here. fly in the studio. All right. Who's who's got a who's got some uh, insect raid or whatever insect raid? What the hell is that? Get <laughs> a fly in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> and he seems to be attracted to my scent. Yeah. But there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna get him with this. Uh, it, hopefully we get him before the end of the episode. You've seen the, the Did you see the Breaking Bad episode where Walt and Jesse were in the method lab and they just were chasing a fly the whole time? That's I'm, what this is right I'm now. I'm embarrassed to say I procrastinated watching that whole series because I wanted to watch it in one sitting, all sixty episodes. So well, that's I'm, that's I'm behind. You are behind yeah, yeah, yeah well that that's not a spoiler but that is the no, best sorry. the best television show in the history of television in my opinion um all right so yeah jenna malone as the oracle and or barbara gordon which means she would be batgirl which we don't know if we she's don't know. we don't know if she was batgirl and then the joker took her out and she's oracle, it, following yeah. following the comics um crippled as well which now gets me thinking she might not be because we already have jimmy olsen who's mm-hmm. crippled mm-hmm. we don't know we, we it could know. be it could be any one of the things they're, they're gonna they, these are based on comics and they have to make them fit in a movie setting so right. it it's not a literal good. translation People, right you know right it's not a literal transition but to, yeah but I, I like it so um all right guys let's move on so I'm looking at some of your tweets you guys are going nuts on Twitter and sorry we can't be live uh, on here but we're doing our best to get it up and we will get it up by I'm hoping next week. Um, and we'll be back live so we can get you in the chat rooms. Um, we got some more tweets. Can you expand on George Miller and the DCEU role? 
Thanks, says at AbsRaz1. Okay, that's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, basically, and this is rumor, okay, so you run this, you run this at your own risk. You know there how you Jeff go. comes in here sometimes and breaks rumors? Oh, yeah. He won't run it on the site. Right. Because it's still in the pro- in the works. That's, he gave me that idea. That's why I'm doing it here today. So basically, absolutely. the rumor is that uh, George Miller is considering one of the standalone DC movies, and it's the untitled Superman sequel. <gasps> That's the rumor. Right. He went supposedly up to the set of Suicide Squad to meet with Chuck Robin and all that. Okay. And uh, see what's going on and maybe enter, you know, it's like a taking the meeting. The guy yeah. flew up there, see Chuck, and uh, maybe, maybe take on one of the DC films, preferably the Superman, the next, whatever, the, whenever the next Superman standalone movie comes out. Right. That's the rumor. Okay. Uh, I only got that from one source. It's been hard to follow with multiple sources. And that's why I haven't really dropped it yet. I just alluded to it, you know? Right. So, uh, the blogosphere out there. I know you're going to write your articles now. Um, yeah, I preface it. Run it at your own risk. But if it doesn't pan out, don't come after me with like, with yeah. pitchforks. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Jeff does this. He brings up some stuff too. It's great for Meet the Movie Press right. and the process of what we do. Mm-hmm. You can you can listen to El Miembe here saying, you know, I'm not comfortable with running this. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, post it at your own. It's great speculation. It's great conversation because, again, I go to... Um, does it make sense? Yeah, he was going to direct Justice League way back when. Mm-hmm. That fell apart. He went off. He did, obviously, now with Mad Max, um, Fury Road. He's got some really good will with him because this is a that was a great movie great that people movie. are loving. And you saw my legitimate reaction. Superman is my boy. That is my favorite superhero mm-hmm. of all time. I, I actually really enjoy. I didn't love, but I really liked Man of Steel. Me too. Every time it's on HBO, I keep it on. I keep it on too. Yeah. And you know why I liked it? Because it's the mythology that was created in that. There was there were some swings and misses in my opinion, sure. But mm-hmm. I love the mythology there. I love that Superman destroyed a town because it's he's not Superman yet. He's still learning, and that's mm-hmm. what I loved about that movie so much. And I thought it really opened up the mythology, and that I wanted more. So with George Miller, I got excited. I went, oh, that would be great. I want to see that. I want to see that movie. So, yeah, I can buy that. Um, so thanks for that, man. Uh, uh, over there, what's your again? Abs Raz, one. That's a good one. Yeah, George Miller. Um, we also have uh, let's see, Tim Lidden Zero. Uh, any big surprises from Marvel at D23? We're going to go on over to Marvel now. Marvel. Hmm. I, I think this, I don't, surprises will probably show footage from Captain America, mm-hmm. the Civil War. I think so. Maybe bring out a new character or two or sh- maybe show the suit. I'm in the process of investigating. Nice. I'm, like, I'm trying to go mm-hmm. to, to the presentation, but it's all, you know, it's out in Anaheim. Mm-hmm. It's an hour mm-hmm. panel. I just want to go for that panel and stuff. So I'm, the, I'm trying to get a badge. Yeah, uh, I'll go through my hookups if I have to, but if not, uh, we'll have someone cover it. But uh, we'll see. I, I haven't really started looking deep yet at what it is they're going to do. That as it gets closer, I'll know more. Right. You right. know, so we're still like almost still a month out. You know, like three weeks out. Yeah. Uh, Marvel wide, the D twenty three. Hmm. I mean, I think that it's pretty much guaranteed we're going to see some footage from Civil War. Um, and Star Wars stuff. Too. Star Wars yeah. stuff. You know, you got to think it's Disney, so mm-hmm. they're gonna. They, they wanted to save. I mean, it might. It might be because they didn't go to uh, Comic Con for Marvel at least. Mm-hmm. Um, that they're planning something for their big event. So, yeah, I think they're. I don't know about big surprises. I think the only thing you can really be surprised at is if they maybe announce Miss Marvel. Announce Miss Marvel. Show Black Panther for the first time, or the Spider Man suit. Yep, or it the Spider Man suit. Yeah. yeah. So I, I take that back. There could be some big surprises that right. make sense. Um, which you know, I, I feel like since you threw some speculation out there, I'm going to do the same with Marvel. Um, and I only heard, and it doesn't make sense yet because it's been a rumor. Mm-hmm. But um, I've had somebody tell me that Emily Blunt is Miss Marvel, but it's a done deal. I don't necessarily buy that right now. Yeah, Guys, speculation, I. like, go ahead and run it. I mean, it's, it's already been ran. <laughs> I mean, like, everybody's saying Emily Blunt for Miss Marvel. Um, but what what I like, you and me talking off air, when I said that to you, you're like, can I say what you said? Sure, go ahead. I said, no, they're aiming bigger. They, they always aim bigger. Just like Michael Douglas, like you said earlier. Yeah. Michael Douglas, Robert Redford, they aim always high. It's like... And if uh, Charlize Theron is available and she's out there, why not? But they don't have a director yet. They got, they're writing a script. They got to get a director, and then they got to get a get a star. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's where I paused because you got to think they they haven't 
announced a director yet. Um, they do have writers, though. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Nicole Perlman, I think. Right. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. That's right. That's a good. That's a good get too. Yeah. I, I think that's great. Um, so yeah, you, you got to first. You got to get a director who's going to have a preference mm-hmm. and either fight for maybe somebody mm-hmm. like. John Favreau did for Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, that makes sense to me. I love Emily Blunt. I think she would be great. Um, but I just, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I just heard that. And I think that's why the rumors are out there. People have heard something and or maybe it's good speculation and they want, it shows that a lot of people love em, Emily Blunt. So that'd be great if she got it, but I don't know. So staying on Marvel for a minute, um, the Spider-Man suit, was it Latina Review that dropped this uh, kind of? I, I can't remember where it came from. Um, I the character, uh, the Spider-Man suit description, which looks like a teenager put together something from his closet and went out to fight crime. Um, it's Spider-Man with some weird goggles. It's Spider-Man mm-hmm. with a backpack, with like some knee pads and uh, like a sweatshirt. So it was interesting to me. Did you see that? Or- yeah, I don't buy it for some reason. You don't buy it? Okay, I don't buy it either. I think I like it as a fan. Mm-hmm. I think it looks cool. From what I'm hearing that, that Feige is, is talking about is that it's really no origin story. It's mm-hmm. He's already out there and maybe he doesn't have the suit yet. I've heard even crazier uh, rumors that by the end of Civil War, he's gonna be the, he's gonna have the Iron Spider suit that Tony Stark gave him in the comics mm-hmm. during Civil War. I don't necessarily buy that either. I don't, I don't think you would do an Iron Spider-Man as the first movie. I think you need the, the you need something traditional. Traditional, absolutely. Yeah. So I like it. I, I like the idea of it, but um, you know, actually, let me ask you this: the Russo brothers' Twitter account. Do you buy it? James Gunn came out. Devin made a very strong argument concerning the people who follow it and stuff. Okay. You know, I don't know what to think. I have a feeling Marvel. I mean, James Gunn or whoever came out. Oh, it's not true. These guys lie on purpose all the time, too. Yeah, so it's yeah. like where there's smoke. In my experience with Marvel, where there's smoke, there is fire. Yeah, and and you're mentioning Devin Faraci over at Birth Movies, Movies Death. Death. Yeah. He, he's, he's saying, no, this is the Russo brothers, and they are teasing perhaps the Spider-Man costume, or, I mean, there's you know, close-ups of some kind of letters and whatnot. I mm-hmm. mean, great. I mean, I didn't really run anything on, on schmozno.com because... I, it's a piece of cloth that could be and like Spider-Man. a goggle. And yeah. a goggle, I don't know. If it's them, I, I totally buy it. Could be them, but, you know, who knows? Uh, we don't know. But what I want to do now is, um, Marissa, can we take some calls? Absolutely. Yay. All right. I'm going to do this, guys. Um, well, you don't know because we're not live. But I'm going to tweet right now, and I would like to take some calls. Um, let's get it on. Uh, I just tweeted something out. Hopefully, yeah, again, I'm talking to people like it's live and it's yeah. not live. So we're going to take some calls, but I want to get some some of you guys out there. Uh, we're going to start doing this a lot more now when we come back live. We'll get some calls and we'll talk, answer your questions. Marissa, you can just let me know when we have somebody out there that wants to chat with us. Um, so I'll go again. Is there any sort of list for Green Lantern or any specific, uh, specific uh, lanterns we'll be focused on? We've already kind of uh, touched on this. We know it's going to be Green Lantern's core. We know it's going to be probably Hal Jordan and John Stewart. So, Common did he actually meet? Wait, what's the, who's the who's the guy that keeps wanting to be? Oh, Tyrese. Tyrese. Yeah. Common. I don't know why I was thinking that. Uh, Tyrese. Yeah. He. We heard that he had a meeting. Um, yeah. I, I, do you think he's even going to? We're, I know we're back on DC and Green Lantern, but do you ever think he's going to? have any shot at John Stewart? Probably. Anything's yeah. possible. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he is in the Fast series, you know, so. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, let's go, uh, let's go to some, some current events. How about, uh, who would you like to see direct Mission Impossible 6? Uh, says, at Joshua Harris 34. Um, have you seen Mission yeah, Impossible? Yeah, I think it's the best in the series. That's uh, what I'm hearing. I'd like to see Christopher come back. Yeah. You know? I, that would be great to see him come back. Macquarie, yeah. I don't know if uh, they're doing, you know, there seems to be a new director every time, if they're going to stick with that. Mm-hmm. Last night, Movie Mance, Scott Mance from Access Hollywood, uh, said it would be great if Doug Lyman came in and, you know, mm-hmm. off of Edge of Tomorrow. But we don't know. Uh, I don't know who I'd like to see. I, I think based on the word of mouth, I would like to see um, – Macquarie come back again. I think that would be cool. But we do have a caller now, so let's uh, let's caller. get him on the line. Uh, hey, you're on Meet the Movie Press. Who do we have on the phone, please? Hey, this is Chad from Virginia. 
Hey, man, how are you doing? Pretty good. All right. So thanks for calling in, man. So we've been talking about some Marvel, some DC. We're going to touch on some Star Wars. What do you what's uh, What do you want to talk about, man? Do you have a question? Um, I want to talk about the writer for Spider-Man. Okay. Good. I, I, I have some opinions on this. What do you... What um, do you... For me, I'm a little worried about it because they haven't really had a knockout hit. Right. Like something that's really convinced me yet. I, I'm with you. I totally agree with you. And we're talking about the Vacation Writers, Directors, mm -hmm. the Writers of Horrible Bosses 2, mm -hmm. and the Writers of Burt Wonderstone. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't have a lot of faith either. I'm wondering actually how they got this job. What are, you, what are your thoughts? They probably gave a good take. They're good in the role. Yeah. You know, so basically when the Russo brothers got hired to do civil, you know, the Captain America Civil War, nobody was confident. Either. Oh, they're community guys. They never really done action. There you go. And then look how it turned out. Yeah. You know, you you go work for Marvel when you want to like break into this, You or excuse, in this case, Sony, you go into the, the space when you want to break out of uh, the norm. Like, so if you guys are comedy, they, they're going to stretch their skin and then, now that there's two studios developing the right. Spider-Man movie and Feige's like, you know, puppeteering or like looking behind the scenes, what's going on, I think they'll be fine. Okay. That's a good that's a good take on he's it. He's attached as producer. He's he's yeah. got a role as a producer in it, so I'm pretty sure he's gonna have have his two cents made. Okay. He's gonna, he's gonna let it be known and stuff. So I'm I, I'm confident in it. Okay. You know, I think they know where they wanna go and these guys are just gonna be the ones to execute it for them. There you go. So that, you bring up a good point. Good in a room. Again, it goes to my my previously thinking uh, with Star Wars and Colin Trevorrow on mm -hmm. on episode nine that we've heard that he's very good at collaboration and these guys might be very good in a room like Omi Bay says uh, that they can collaborate well they can they can kind of insert Spider Man into the into the the world creation that they're doing over there so I like it also. Uh no no writer duo, no writer ever is the sole writer. You know, like when these movies are developed, they'll give a take or two, then they bring in a professional another one to close it for them. Yeah. Then they'll bring a guy on set. There's gonna then they're gonna be the first of multiple writers on this movie. They'll uh, probably execute they'll probably be the ones with story you know, like Edgar Wright on that man. He yeah. laid it out, they use half his story, then then Adam McKay and uh, Yeah. Paul Rudd and uh, the director came on board and did some yeah. stuff. So once they get it, you know, the director it's I would, don't don't be concerned because of course they'll bring their closers in later on to keep you know uh, polishing up the drafts and stuff. So I wouldn't nice. be too concerned about it. Yeah. Are right, you're still on the line there? What was your name again, man? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Oh, what was your name again? My name is Ted. 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 Yeah. All right, man. That's Ted. A, that's a great question. I have and... another comment to make if it's okay. Sure, man. What do you got? The thing is, though, have it Francis Daly and the other guy have mostly written R-rated movie, like R-rated movies, so do you think it'll be hard for him to tone down to, no. like, most of their humor no. is R-rated stuff, isn't it? Sure. No. Yeah, no, that's a legitimate uh, question, and, and it's it's kind of along the lines of, of how Main Bay just answered it, where they're going to be there to kind of collaborate with everybody, fall in line. They, they've got yeah, it in their wheelhouse. Cool. Look, I mean, because I, their humor might be R-rated, but, you know, they can tone that back and i mean we're hearing it's a john hughes kind of tone that they're looking for with spider-man which sounds yeah. great to me but again it's gonna come you got kevin feige who's looking over their shoulder you got a new director somewhat which john watts and there's going to be a lot of collaboration and like uh, el Mimbe says and i agree with and now i'm a little bit more confident uh they're going to bring in some more people you know, there's not going to be just these guys unless they knock it out of the park. Right. There, there is. They'll still bring somebody. But uh -huh. yeah, there's going to be maybe somebody on set. There's going to be maybe somebody come in and polish. You know, you never know. So, I guess we what we have to do, Ted, is in Feige we trust. In Feige we trust. Yes. <laughs> right. So thanks for the call, man. We really appreciate it. I love getting calls on Meet the Movie Press. So uh, yeah, you guys have a good one. Thanks I've you too. Been listening to the Shmoes for about two years now and I really like the stuff you guys do. So oh, thanks. thanks, man. I appreciate that. And the Schmoes yeah, appreciate it, too. Thanks. You too, Ted. Thanks. All right, Marissa, do we want to get another caller? Do we have somebody? All right. We got another caller on the line. You want to meet the movie press? What's your name? Uh, my name is Alberto. Alberto. I'm from Miami. I'm from Miami. How you doing, man? I'm good. And you? I'm doing well, thanks. So you're Cuban? On... 
Yeah. Are you Cuban? Yeah, uh, my dad's Cuban. I'm Venezuelan. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got we we got El Miembe in the house here, uh, and I, of course I'm Mark Riley. Meet the Movie Press. What it, uh, what do you want to talk about, man? Do you have a question? Yeah, uh, it's a question from a while back. It's about uh, the real McCoy. I want I was wondering to find out the director for that movie. For I'm sorry. For what is it? The real McCoy. The real the Chris McCoy. Chris Pratt movie. The real McCoy. I'm not familiar. No. <laughs> it's a project. One of the numerous projects attached to. So Chris Pratt, yeah. right? Is that what you're asking? I mean, Chris, yeah. Chris Pratt now is um, stratosphere of a career. Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, that was his, really his coming out party. And then to, to follow it up with Jurassic World a year later um, with the third highest grossing movie of all time, this guy can ride his ticket anywhere he wants to go. Pretty much, yeah. So I would say I'm not even familiar with this project. So if I would say if he wanted to do it, that thing would get greenlit. I don't know. It, and, and it's... You know, we've heard rumors, and we'll get to him, that he might be in Ghostbusters with Channing Tatum. Uh, he's definitely coming back for Jurassic World and Guardians of the Galaxy. He's got a lot on his plate. He's he's also rumored or maybe even confirmed to be in that uh, that project of Viking, Cowboy, Ninja. Yeah, he's attached to a lot of things. Let's see what sticks. Yeah, it's, it's right now probably you're going to see him first in probably the sequels and or something he's already filmed, which I don't know what what he's filmed and what's coming out I think yet. he's doing Magnificent Seven with Denzel. That's right. Yeah. yeah, you're going to see him probably next in Magnificent Seven, the remake with the Antoine Fuqua and uh, Denzel Washington. So, What about Passengers? Oh, and Passengers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good call. Passengers with um, Jennifer Lawrence. They're, that, that was greenlit. Really, I mean, you got to look at, again, that was greenlit pretty much right after Jurassic World. Yeah. There you go, man. So, yeah, if, if these things are like he got attached to passengers and then Jurassic World comes out and just kills everything in its way, they greenlit that. Um, I wouldn't say directly off of him, but you got Jennifer Lawrence too that's going to have Hunger Games, the last Hunger Games in November, that's going to kill. So those movies are going to go first. And then, yeah, based on reasoning, I say Chris Pratt is doing Magnificent Seven now. He's then going to shoot passengers. He's probably then going to go shoot Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. and then after that, Jurassic World. So I think that's what we're going to get in the near future. So um, thanks for that question, man. Is that uh, anything else you want to bring up? Uh, yeah. Uh, for Laura and Chris Miller, you know, they, did, they were supposed to do The Flash because they had written it. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. good, and the, and the Spider-Man, the animated Spider-Man movie. Right. Like, but now they're doing the Hesel movie. Like, who's going to direct those now? Because I don't know if anybody can else tackle a like, full-on Chris Miller type movie. Right. I, You know, you bring up a good point. I mean, Lord and Miller are just absolutely killing it now um, with the projects they're a part of. They're a part of the Han Solo standalone mm -hmm. Star Wars anthology movie. Mm -hmm. uh, they are writing The Flash. Um, what else have they got? There, there's Lego 2 in development. There's the animated Spider-Man movie. Yeah, I don't know what these guys are going to do, how they're doing it. They're obviously not sleeping um, at all. So... Yeah, I don't. I don't know about Spider Man, uh, the the animated movie. I don't, and I don't know about the Flash. I I would think they might do a, a script of the Flash and yeah. then move on. Yeah. Um, that that I mean, when they were announced for the Flash movie to write it, everybody right. assumed they were going to now direct yeah, it's it. Assumed. It's still a negotiation. It's yeah. still a negotiation. Yeah. It's going to fit in their schedule. I mean, uh, when I don't even know when this standalone Han Solo movie is coming. Yeah, that and Flash are later on. You know, yeah they got time they got time so it's a great question uh thanks for calling man really appreciate you guys calling in to meet the movie press it's really fun oh. for for me and, and thanks for calling in yeah thanks man for tuning in no uh problem. all right so why don't we move on man look at it look at twitter just going crazy we it, have time for the scoops or yeah, yeah oh yeah we okay. have we have plenty of time all so right. why don't we now move in to the marvel scoop let's do a marvel scoop, let's do yeah. marvel so you, the, the uh, floor is yours my friend all right, so basically, uh, I know who the bad guy is going to be in the pilot episode, excuse me, of uh, Luke Cage. Nice! It's a, and I was All waiting right. for the actor, mm -hmm. excuse me, to drop it together, so still waiting on the actor, I might as well drop the character. It's a guy named Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth? A cottonmouth, a bad guy. That's funny. Drug lord. Uh, of course he's a drug lord. <laughs> bad guy, drug <laughs> lord. Uh, he... Uh, it depends if he was with the Serpent Society or somebody under Wilson Fisk. We Got have it. more background on the site when we publish it. But yeah, he's a bad guy in the pilot episode. You know how like in Daredevil, there's 
initial smaller bad guys that led up to Wilson Fisk. Yep, yep. Well, and the pilot Cottonmouth is is the bad guy that Luke Cage has to kind of take out, take out at first, leading then, to a bigger, probably leading to a bigger one. Yes, so. I love it, and I love what, and that opens up the conversation. Great. Last night on the Schmoes main show, mm -hmm. um, the Schmoes No movie show, we had Stephen tonight. He yeah. came on. In the room, this guy is awesome. He's so awesome. He mm -hmm. was the Daredevil showrunner. He got brought in. He talked about that that move on like how he got him. He was really busy. Mm -hmm. And then they threw some scripts at him for Daredevil. We need some help. And mm -hmm. he then couldn't turn it down because it was so good. Yeah. And that's a comment on what they're doing over there on Netflix. Um, I have complete faith after Daredevil in what they're doing with AKA Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, uh, Iron Fist and then the Defenders. Yeah. I just can't wait for that stuff. Neither can I. So that's awesome. Cottonmouth. Well, you heard it here, guys. Cottonmouth. I believe it. Um, I'll, I'll take any anything going with Netflix and Marvel because um, I love it so much. And I can't wait for Daredevil Season 2. We got The Punisher coming up. Electra. I mean, that, that sandbox just got a lot more fun to play in. What's, what's your thoughts? I'm going to segue nicely here using Netflix and Star Wars. Have you heard this, this rumor? that I heard it, but I'm... Not sure yet. I'm not. I don't buy it. It's, like, it's interesting. Star Wars is very busy as is. I don't know. Even right. Yeah. Know, maybe. <coughs> excuse me. In the future, anything's possible. But sure. Right now, doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So the ongoing rumor, guys, is that Star Wars is going to have a live action TV show on Netflix. Makes a ton of sense. Netflix is already in good with their studio Disney, with Marvel, obviously, and Daredevil. But yeah, it seems like they're a little busy right now. Everything's going to really hinge on Force Awakens, I think, mm -hmm. um, because they're holding back on, you know, obviously we're getting all the spinoffs and uh, th these movies are getting announced and whatnot. So I can't wait for anything and everything in Star Wars. However, I don't think we're going to get a Netflix thing yet. I think, I, it, I think it definitely can happen in the future. Absolutely. So... Um, uh, why don't we get one question about Star Wars? Because is there a call coming in, Marissa? Can we take someone? Oh, they just hung up. Oh, uh, we lost them. All right. No big deal. But on that note, I have something interesting Star Wars related. I That was where I'm going because oh, we okay. have uh, part three of the scoop happening right now. El Miembe, talk to us. Uh, so this one comes from a very trusted source that I, that I trust very well. Okay. And, but the thing is, it's been hard. You know, I got to be very, now that the Trevorrow news is out there, it's a Grantland article right up, so I have to be careful. Right. I was waiting, I was waiting for that shoe to drop before this one. So this one's a rumor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm not running it on my own site just yet. Okay. okay. So if you run this, run at your own risk and peril. If it doesn't pan out, don't come with me and pitchforks. Yeah. The rumor is... In Star Wars, Rogue, uh, the anthology film Rogue One. Rogue One. Felicity Jones is reportedly playing the daughter of Boba Fett. <sighs> See, wow. okay, guys, he <laughs> said this to me. Look, uh, I'm, I'm on record as saying that I am the biggest Star Wars fan ever. Um, <laughs> goes without saying. I think everybody is the biggest Star Wars fan ever. But he said that. I was like, oh, ah. I mean, I I can go nuts on that. Um, that's it, it, it's crazy sounding though isn't it like yeah, felicity kinda... did, really as is boba fett's daughter i mean that just sounds crazy to me um i would buy it if they can make it work i believe in gareth edwards for mm -hmm. um rogue one, yeah. rogue one i just love what he he's such a big fan of the universe i love that at celebrations he was showing all the pictures of him on the old tatooine set and drinking the the, the blue milk so this guy knows what he's doing um it's interesting. We've heard a lot of rumors on what Felicity could be playing. At one point, it was like Hera from Rebels. Mm -hmm. um, I heard, they're, they're, but they're okay. This this nagging Boba Fett thing. It's just everywhere. We even ran something on Schmozno.com that there's this one of the standalones is going to be Boba Fett and Han Solo. Mm -hmm. I'm still kind of thinking that could be it, it, that it's there because we have Han Solo standalone movie, Young Han Solo. I don't see why they couldn't do Boba Fett in there. Maybe they, announced it at D23. Maybe they announced it at D23. Maybe they announced it at D23. Yeah. Um, do you th I'm a little confused. Maybe you know. Is the the Han Solo movie with Lord and Miller, was that Trank's movie? Was I, that the one he, he dropped so. out? Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, but a lot of people were saying, no, 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 it's something different. We don't know what Trank was working on yet. I don't know if I buy that. I mean, I feel like they needed to, they, they have to start planning these anthology movies. We know Rogue One is starting to film. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to start shooting 
to, to hit the release dates that they're talking about. We're getting a Star Wars movie anthology or episode every year. <laughs> I can't wait. So, what are, you, what are your thoughts on Boba Fett? Um, do you think he's going to get his own standalone movie? Not sure. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice. I mean, but if what I, if that rumor panned out to be true that Felicity Jones is, is his daughter, and then, yeah. then maybe it does segue into a standalone movie. Yeah. You know? Well, it, what what I immediately get from this is with the rumors being Boba Fett is either getting his own movie or in a movie with Han Solo. It really and now this uh, Felicity's playing the the daughter of Boba Fett. Everything is now connected. Yeah. And that's really cool. And you know, as you know, guys, um, there's there's a new fad out there with movies, connection, <laughs> interconnected universes, interconnected universes, universes with yeah. uh, Marvel, DC, and now Star Wars. So, I I would buy it. I mean, I kind of like it, and it. Well, I'll say this: I kind of like it, and I kind of don't. And <laughs> and I'll say the the reason I don't is because now there's just Boba Fett. His mystery is being. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of. We're kind of pulling away the mask of this cool character mm -hmm. and showing you everything. So obviously, if it's the daughter, Boba Fett got busy, uh, which I like. I can I can buy it. I just hope that they stick with that he is the clone um, because and you know whether you like it or not, uh, George Lucas made the clone Boba Fett canon by putting his voice in Empire Strikes Back. So, right. um, so in Rogue One, which is happening before even New Hope. Right. He's a clone then. Unless you go in and dub another voice in there because I've heard this Boba Fett rumor that it's the mantle that's being handed over. Even the, the ridiculous rumor that Michael Fassbender would be Boba Fett. Um, it's not, no, I don't I don't think so. Um, so yeah, we, we gotta stick to that. So I don't know guys, but I love that that rumor. Yeah, me too, but I'm, I'm, I'm still scared to run on this. I, like I'm yeah. behaving on Star Wars stuff until Colin comes to pass and then right. I'll go on with them, some other stuff. So I don't wanna overwhelm them either. Yeah. So, but I, I, like, it's, I thought it was interesting enough to drop on the show. Yeah. You know, so let's see if it pans out. No, I love it. And we're, we're all now sitting on some Boba Fett stuff because my illustrious co-host Jeff Snyder broke uh, that there is going to be a standalone Boba Fett movie. Um, then I came out and, and one of my writers who had a scoop that Han Solo is getting his own movie with Boba Fett. I don't know if it's going to all sync up and, uh, you know, be Boba Fett and Han Solo. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I'd love to see it. it makes sense. But uh, that's Star Wars for you guys. Um, what else is out there as far as are we hitting any other news out there, man? Do you have anything you wanted to talk about? I think we got pretty much most everything. Most everything. Else? What else dropped this week? Yeah, I mean, you know, we got we got we you know we have Tom Cruise talking about an Edge of Tomorrow sequel that he had an idea. That's cool. I like mm -hmm. that. Um, the Drew Pierce Ghostbusters outline. Now, Drew Pierce wrote a version of uh, Mission Impossible Five: A Rogue Nation. He also wrote uh, Iron Man Three. One of the writers there, and he dropped that he turned in uh, an outline mm -hmm. uh, for Ghostbusters being now the male version with Chris Pratt, Channing Tatum. Mm -hmm. um, then Ivan Reitman came out pretty quick and said, no, 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 there's only one movie and it's the Paul Feig, the all woman Ghostbusters. What are your thoughts on that? Not really tracking Ghostbusters. Yeah. I don't quite, frankly, don't care. I think, I don't know. I think it's gonna have its issues when it comes out, I could be wrong, but I don't, it, I never bought this shared universe concept. I think he, right. Drew Pierce is one of multiple writers that went into pitch takes yep. and stuff. and. They selected Paul Feige's take. Uh, yeah, Paul Feige's take. So, I mean, he pretty much came out hardcore. Uh, Ivan Reitman and said he deaded whatever rumors were out there that this is the only Ghostbusters film. So, so much for that shared universe concept. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, the, the producer of the movie goes on the record saying that you know, it's, I think it's it's legitimately true. That, not to discount Mr. Pierce, he probably went in, and gave a take, and uh, it didn't come to pass. That's well, all. and to, Pier uh, to Drew Pierce's credit, he even went back on Twitter and said, "Pump your brakes, internet. <laughs> you know, I just turned in an outline." There you go. And, yeah, and, and you're right because the first off, they're gonna have to see how it performs. The, the this female version, mm -hmm. like if it does wonders. Um, which I think it will because I you got we, I get you got all women there, which I which I totally get behind. We mm -hmm. need that. We need more movies like that. But we're talking about Ghostbusters that for me has a lot of nostalgia to it. Like yeah. you grew up with. I grew up. We did. We did yeah, I loved it in '84. I was a I kid. Loved My it mother too. took 
Don't oh, get yeah. to see it all the time. Oh, I had a hat. I wore a hat with the logo, and it says, we came, we saw, we kicked his ass. Yeah. And I thought I was, like, totally, like, you know, edgy because I had ass on my hat. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but it's, like, but it's not a huge... I Look, say what you will about Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters being a huge property. It is, but for our generation, not this generation. Right. Who loves their superhero movies star wars look star wars whether you like the prequels or not they kept the fans there so star wars is a huge brand so when it comes to ghostbusters <coughs> excuse me um we're gonna have to see what the all woman um movie does if it kills then that outline that drew pierce did probably they're looking at as like okay let's now start building this universe a little bit more but absolutely i would say that he was probably contracted to write a take they liked his take put it put it on paper we'll we'll throw it in development and see what happens but they are going to wait i think for the all female version of ghostbusters so yeah uh there you go guys so this has been an awesome awesome episode of meet the movie rest el Mimbe, thanks for coming in thanks for having me yeah no man Any anytime a jet fan could take over for a patriot fan i know right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually uh, Snyder didn't want to come on today because of Deflate Gate. He, he's Gate. still he's still crying that uh, that uh, Brady has been denied. And Tom still, Shady, yeah, cheater. Tom Shady, tainted rings. I tend to agree with you, but that is a conversation <laughs> for another time. That's a sports show. Yeah, yeah. that's the sports show. So, uh, as you guys know, El Miembe at El Miembe on Twitter and at Her Her Heroic Hollywood dot com at Heroic Hollywood. On, also on Twitter and yep. Hollywood.com yeah, and on Dude. Twitter on my eBay. So yeah, I'm, and congrats for that, man. Thank now you. Uh, Heroic Hollywood, you got some great writers there. You've really come out of the gates, oh, put us all some, to shame. Put I discovered some great voices. I'm still adding some more people, looking at resumes and stuff. Nice, very busy. Yeah, very busy time for me since it launched. Yeah, you know, I so. bet, man. And you got that great Grantland article. So yeah. kudos, man. Congratulations. I love having you on anytime. Oh, anytime, man. And uh, guys, as you know, uh, we are. Uh, I am at Riley Around. I am editor in chief schmozno.com. Check out schmozno.com every day. Um, and do me a favor rate and comment and subscribe to Meet the Movie Press on the Popcorn Talk Network and stick around for the shows that we have there. We have this main show of Schmozno uh, every Thursday at 6 p.m. PST. We had Stephen tonight on last night talking about Daredevil and how he got involved. We have a great show. We're doing the ultimate schmodown right now, which I maybe mean, I don't know why you're not involved with the uh, trivia contest because that that would be fun to have you on. Okay. Um, but I I will be going up with uh, Dan Morell from Screen Junkies. I don't know when that is, but I believe next week uh, we have JTE and Box Office Breakdown taking on uh, the Geek. Tiffany Smith and John Campia. So that should be fun. Ooh. So go ahead and, and uh, check out the main show, Schmoes No, and uh, you can check it out on schmoesno.com. Uh, this is Meet the Movie Press. We will be back next Friday. Uh, we'll see about the guests. But until then, guys, we'll see you on the interwebs. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Spitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.